Hi, my name is Melissa and I am back with another look for Lisa Brown International. For today's look, we're going to be doing this fun, creative, high fashion runaway look. It's going to be a bit of gold flakes on the eyes, how to apply a nice lash. And doing a foxy eye, you can see the eye looks very extended. And then just with a nice glossy lip and some freckles. For this look, we are going to be doing very like glowy gloss like skin and for that you can need quite a bit of skincare and hydration before so you're just going to use a primer and a moisturizer at the moment i'm using a rose cream primer or a rose cream moisturizer and i'm just going to be applying this all over the face starting on the inside of the face just blending it and Fusing it into the skin. For some extra moisture, I'm also going to be using a moisturizing spray or just a prep and prime spray. So as you can see for this look, we don't have any eyeshadow on, which means we don't really have to focus too much on mixing anything on the under eye area, but I am still going to start with my brows first. Brows, I'm using a gel and a flat brush, a little angle brush. I want this blur out to be quite fluffy, so I'm going to try and not make it too solid by just brushing up. And then in little hair strokes, we're just going to fill in the gaps. And just brush the product through the brow as well as you go. Just keep brushing the product through, making little hair strokes. Maybe using a gloss on the eye. So if you put too much product on the eyelid before you apply the gloss, the gloss will make it move. So we're going to try and keep the amount of product that we're using on the actual lid to a minimum, but I am going to prime the eyelid with a little bit of concealer. So I'm using my liquid concealer, just putting a little bit of it onto the brush and then just tapping it onto the eyelid. Like I said, we're going to try and keep the product amount on the lid to a minimum. Still blending it out onto the nose, inner corner, all the way to the lash line. I won't be setting the eye, I'm just going to leave the concealer on there. If I do set the eye, the powder mixed with the gloss is going to make a paste, so we don't want that. Now that all the skincare products and the primers are absorbed by the skin, I'm going to move on to my foundation. I'm going to be using my face and body foundation mixed with a bit of concealer so that I can get slightly more coverage. So mixing the two, I just decanted it onto a palette and I'm going to be picking it up with my foundation brush and just applying from the center of the face all the way onto the nose. You don't know whether you're doing this makeup look for a high fashion show, for a runway show, for a client to actually go out of the house. That's going to make a big difference in the products that you use because if you're going to be doing this for someone that needs to leave the house, you're going to have to be very careful with which products you use so that you don't end up making their skin so glossy and wet that they don't or that they aren't able to touch it or that it gets oilier during the day. But if you're doing this for a photo shoot, which is going to be putting makeup on, shooting and taking it off, you can make this look as glossy and glowy as you want because you don't have to go outside and withstand the weather, the wind and the hair going everywhere. To the neck as well. And then I will be going in with a concealer underneath the eye, just a little bit in this inner corner to camouflage those lines. Underneath the corner of my mouth and on top, next, next to my nose, my moustache area. Then I'll just be blending that in. This is just to give a little bit more coverage on areas where I know I like to touch my face more and that I tend to get oily. And then just patting like little pat motions. I'm just patting the product into the skin and the under eye area. 
per areas are the only areas that I will be setting. I'm going to be using a compact powder in my shade with a fluffy dome brush. And I'm just going to set the product so that it is no longer sticky because this concealer doesn't dry by itself. You need to set it around the nose, chin. So that is the only areas that I'm going to be setting. This is probably one of my favorite tricks that I learned going to a MAC Cosmetics Masterclass. And Marcus applied, this is my favorite brand, a uh, contour shade, and he applied this to a wet foundation. So using a dome brush, I'm going to pick up some product. Starting next to the ear on the cheekbone, working on the actual cheekbone, we're just going to start applying product. Still working on the actual cheekbone, we're just going to build a nice bone structure. And you need to remember that if you're doing something for film or for a photo shoot or runway, that the amount of lights that they use is going to cause your makeup to appear 30 to 70% lighter, which means you're going to have to make your contour a lot stronger than you would have done if it was just for a day makeup look. And then the side of the nose and the jawline. So remember that Bobbi Brown 3, this is your 3. Then I'm going to move on to my bronzer. I'm using a fluffy brush once again. And I will use my butter bronzer. You can use any warm bronzer for this. I'm just going to pick up some product, dust it off. And then starting to the back of the ear, blending it onto the forehead. Dusting it off once again. And then going on to the jawline and a little bit down the neck. To your highlighter, so this is a very glowy look. As you can see, there is a lot of highlight going on. I'm just going to use a small tapered brush. You can use an eyeshadow brush, you can use a fan brush. I prefer this one because it's nice and compact, so it's going to give me a nice glow. Then going in with a golder shade. This one's the golder shade of the bunch. I'm just going to pick up the golder shade. And I'm going to apply it on all the high points of the face. So this is the lip. You can see that it looks, I love a lip highlight. It looks very cute. And then cheekbone. So I'm just following that natural light. And I'm going to run it onto the brow bone as well. So that it almost forms this C shape. Just going to highlight, highlight, highlight. If you are scared that your highlight is too bright, you can always take your foundation brush once again. Just make it a little bit softer, so it's, you can save the situation. Inspired by, I was actually just doing my nails with these gold flakes that I bought. I think they are edible gold flakes, so if you're a baker you should have some of these in the kitchen. But I thought I would just be able to do a really nice makeup look with them. It was like a nice foxy eye. The gold look to match the nails and it came out perfectly. So for this, I'm going to use lip gloss as a base. My favorite gloss to use is the MAC lip gloss. This is a clear one. I do all my glossy eyeshadow looks with this gloss mixed with powder. Um, when you're doing gloss on clients, you're going to have to keep their eye shape in mind because my eyelids are pretty big and they do not touch. So with gloss on my eye, I don't feel it at all. But if you have a client that has very hooded eyes or small eyes, every time they blink, they might feel the gloss sticking to the top lid, which is going to be very uncomfortable. And you also need to remember if you mix in an eyeshadow that it will crease. So there are a lot of pros and cons to using gloss, but I love using gloss for makeup looks. You don't need to use it just on the lips. You can also use gloss on the cheekbones. And it's going to make your skin look like gloss. It's amazing. So using a flat brush, this is just a concealer brush, I am going to take some of the product, squeeze it out, and I will just apply it to the eyelid. And I'm just going to be tapping it onto the rest of the lid as well. So I'm not going to, do, I'm not going to smear because I remember I still have 
uh, foundation or concealer on my eyelids. So I'm just going to use tapping motions to spread the gloss to where I want it to be. I'm going to slightly spread it to the side of the eye, the inside, and I want to go all the way to just under the brow. Depending on what gloss you use, if you're using the MAC one, remember to store it the lid side up because these caps do spill and it can make everything extremely sticky. There's other brands of gloss as well, it all depends on what you have available. If you have a gloss with a bit of a glitter or a, sh or a color in it, it's going to give you a really nice shine. So don't be too worried about the color of the gloss that you have. We're just using it as a base for your foils to stick on. And you're going to need your gold flakes. So with my tweezer, I'm just going to take out a bit of a bit of these gold flakes and I'm just going to use my tweezer to break off pieces. So none of these pieces are going to be the same size, they're definitely not going to look like the other eye, but that's okay because we're not aiming for perfection, we're aiming to be creative and create a look. The bigger pieces are going to be on the eyelid themselves. So I'm going to try and match the shapes with the shape of my eye. So this one is the smaller end to the inside. So I'm going to put it down. I'm just going to use a tweezer to stick it down. I'm trying to leave a little line on my lash line as well because I still will be doing a winged liner. This is just like building a puzzle. You're just picking pieces up and you put them down. And then they stick. So you really don't have to be too precise with these. I'm just kind of filling in the gaps and building, building a nice gold look. The way you place these are all going to depend on your client or your model's eyes. I think this is part of why it is so important to plan out your makeup looks and make a face chart so that you can plan because if you want to do this look and you don't plan it out you're not going to think about the model you need so you need to be sure that the model you need or the model you have is going to match the look that you're doing so you can't give this look to someone that has very good eyes because it's going to be a mess because the, the, the gold is going to keep moving up and down and it's going to transfer and you're going to end up with a clear lid again. I think doing this look was a nice reminder to me that you can be creative with anything in your house and this is like something I found in the kitchen but if you've got a little plant outside that it has tiny leaves or tiny flowers you can use that with gloss and just stick it onto your eyes and you can do a really creative makeup look. That is the end of my gold felix application. Now I will be moving over to the liner part. I know liner sounds scary, but please do not be scared. There's easy ways to do it and we're gonna work through that quickly. But different people are comfortable with using different mediums. To me, the easiest thing to use is the Black Track Gel Liner from MAC Cosmetics and my 210 brush, the 210 brush from MAC. This is my favorite duo for doing liner. If you work better with a felt tip or a liquid liner, please use that. This is just what I prefer and what works best for me. I have some product out of the container and I'm just going to make the brush as flat as I can. So you can see it's got a very small end. In my liner, I like looking down and I'm just going to place it and flick it out. We're not doing a massive wing because it's going to be disguised by the lashes but we do want a little bit of a wing. I'm going to do it one line and then I'm going to go halfway to that line and I'm just going to pull it back onto the lashes. You don't have to do a big wing, we're going to be focusing more on this inner corner area. Picking up some more product, flattening the brush. I'm just going to run product on the rest of the lid. So we like putting a black liner in the lashes because that's going to help disguise the lash band if you're putting lashes on top. So starting from the front, I'm just trying to pull a nice even line on my lash line or as close to my lash line as I can.
Please don't be discouraged if you struggle with liner. It took me two and a half years to learn how to do liner and now I'm proud of it. <laughs> okay, so for the inner corner, you really want to make sure you have enough product and your brush is as flat as you can get it. And you're going to follow the natural line of your eye to the inside. So you're just going to sketch it out. So just working to the inside of the eye, keeping this line very thin, keeping your brush as flat as you can, and then drawing it back into the waterline. Okay, so back into the waterline. And then filling in that little triangle. Okay, so I'm not gonna do liner for the bottom line, we're just gonna keep it open but I want to connect this into the waterline. Okay, so there is your, they call, I think they call it a foxy eye. So there is your foxy eye. And putting on lashes is really gonna help the fact that it gives you that flick wing effect. For some lashes I made at home, I bought this little tray at Chinatown. This is what the original lash looked like, so it's very plain, very simple. Then I took a bold pack of lashes that are very that I can't wear on a day-to-day -day basis. I cut them up and I built different sets. So for today's set, I'm wearing this one. So you can see I made it, I made this one a bit longer on the end, making it more fluffy like this one. So it starts off very thin and then it gives you a cat eye effect because of the length of the lashes that work outwards. So we're just going to be applying this lash. There are many different ways to apply lashes, like one of my favorite is to cut the lashes in half and then in half again. You can barely see them, but then applying this in two sections, that's going to help so that there's no lash band that has tension and that's going to try and pop off. I use Duo Glue, this is available at Inglot or MAC, this is one of my favorite glues, but I do know Click sells a bunch of different glues that are also of really good quality. This is just what I'm used to using, the glue dries as a clear, you do get glue that dries as black, but if you're not going to be doing a liner or liquid liner, this is going to be perfect because it's going to dry clear. Just putting some glue down on the back of the container, then using the back of my tweezer, Picking up some glue and then just running it across the lash band. I always apply some extra glue on the ends so that it apply and it helps like for an extra stick just stays onto the lash longer. I like holding my lash like this. It's in bending it into a bit of a U shape so that it kind of starts shaping to the shape of your eye before the glue dries. And I like giving it a good 60 seconds to dry so that the glue becomes really tacky so that as soon as I put it on, it's just going to stick to the lashes. So while my glue dries in the one hand, I'm going to go to my Essence I Love Extreme Curl and Volume Mascara and I'm just going to put a generous amount on my upper lashes. And I'm going to be using my waterproof mascara for the bottom lash line. I'm going to really go in with mascara on the bottom lash line because I really want the lashes to pop and give, help give the eye that foxy shape. As the clear lash glue dries, it goes from being white to going more clear. So I then take it on my tweezer, make sure I give it some extra bend before I apply it. And I apply it on the middle first and then sticking down the corners. Just look down, place the lash on top of my lashes. Before, before I glue it down, I just pull it to the end first to make sure it's wide enough for my eye. And then placing it on the front of the lash. Use your hands. If your hands were better for you, go for your hands. But for me, it's easier to use a tweezer. And then you can just use your fingers or your tweezer to clamp them together so that you can kind of merge the two. Moving on to something that's very exciting for me is fake freckles, although they say fox freckles. 
So I'm gonna, I will be using two colors of brow gel. You can use a pencil. I just don't have any pencils in the shades that I would like, but you can use black, gray, and brown pencils to make different dots. So freckles are usually on the areas of the face where the sun hits most. So that would be around the forehead, on the nose, above the eyes, on the cheekbones, not so much on the chin, but you know all the freckles are usually across the nose. 210 brush. And I am going to pick up some product. This is the black one. I'm going to start with black and then transi transition to brown. So I'm just going to be doing... I have to do it quite dark for the sake of the video. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to make dots. In and make freckles. Okay, those are a bit too much, but let's leave them for now. On the nose as well. You're going to want to do the freckles when you are done with all your other makeup as well. Because you're going to be doing this over your highlighter, contour, blush, setting powder. Okay, so these are my black freckles. Then I'm just going to wipe my brush, make sure it's clean, or just get most of the black product off. And then I will be use using a brown brow gel after, so this is going to be a bit softer. So before I go in and put my brown freckles on, I'm going to go in with my foundation brush, and I'm just going to pat over the black freckles to make them lighter so that they can kind of merge into the rest of my foundation. This is also going to help them look more like skin. You can also use your finger. Your finger is going to help you pick up some more product. We go in with our next color, still the small brush. I'm just going to dot them over my face. Concentrate most of my freckles on the nose area. Before that dries, I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to run over them with my brush, making them lighter. And then I'm going to use some of my setting spray and just spray it over the makeup so that it can start melting everything together. It's also just a nice refresher and adds an extra glow to the skin. The Maria Cosmetics Lipstick in Velvet Virginia. It is available in Cape Town. This is my favorite pink because I can use this as a blush, I can use it as a lipstick and I can use it as an eyeshadow. For now I'm just going to do a little bit of it as a blush, so just picking up some of the product on my finger. And I'm just patting it into the skin. This color almost allows for like the perfect little, like perfect amount of rosiness. You can do this with any lipstick. So if there's a specific lipstick that you would like to match your lipstick and your blush, you can do this with any kind of lipstick. And then just a little on the sides of my nose, so it looks like I got some sun. And on my chin. For lining the lips, I'm going to use a little detailer brush. I'm going to pick up some of the product. So instead of using a lip liner, I'm going to be using the lipstick itself. 
and I'm going to start pretty far out on the lip side because I want to create a different shape. So you can see that extended my lip quite far over where my natural lip line is, but that is the look we're going for. This is a more of a runaway, fun, high fashion look. Also just going to line the bottom lip. So I'm just going to tone it down a bit with a liquid lipstick. This is Brent Spice from MAC. You can use any nude lipstick for this. This is going to make it look a little bit more brown. I like the look of the gloss. I will be going back in with my gloss and adding some gloss over. Also just going to use my little accent brush for that. Or my little detailer brush. Just to pick up some gloss. And we're going to run the gloss all the way to the edges. And that is it for our foxy glowy skin look. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a lot from it.